we want to stick with this theme now because we are learning that Goldman Sachs is well taking a little bit of hit from this, losing its ranking as the world's top M&A advisor for the first time in five years. Joining us now to explain why and well, who's at the top of that list is Bloomberg M&A reporter Michelle Davis. Who is at the top of that list? So JP Morgan has stolen the crown mm -hmm. from Goldman Sachs. Yeah. They have a long-standing rivalry, but Goldman has always been known as the best M&A advisor. JP Morgan has always dominated at, you know, debt underwriting because they have that big balance mm -hmm. sheet. And the reason Goldman fell off in the first half of this year is that they're really known for getting on the mega deals, the high-profile deals. And as you were talking about, you know, there just hasn't been the volume this year. Mm -hmm. And of the top five biggest deals, Goldman was only involved on one of them compared uh -huh. to JP Morgan, which which got three of those. Well, I am curious about that because when we talk about the drop in M&A activity, I mean, we should point out the number of deals is starting to kind of pick up, but though they're much smaller deals, at least uh, relative to what we saw a few years ago here. Wh why didn't they buy for some of those uh, sort of uh, mid-tier type deals? They just didn't think it was worth it? Well, it's impossible for us to know whether yeah. or not they've vied, but one trend that we've seen a lot of this year is that there have been a lot of uh, hostile situations and bidding war situations, which mean, it, you know, Goldman itself, they're advising tech resources um, in defense of Glencore. Glencore has made a couple hostile offers. And so that's the deal that, you know, it won't show up in the data just yet because no deal's been announced or agreed to. Mm -hmm. So Goldman has been involved in a couple situations where perhaps their horse didn't win or, or we don't, they're doing all the work, but it doesn't show up. In, in the league tables. What about the potential for a bounce back? Are, are, are the shifts that we're seeing now in terms of what deals are getting done and more importantly, who's actually advising on that deal, uh, on those deals, is that something that's gonna stick or do we, or once we get back to those mega deals, Goldman's gonna be back up at top? It's impossible yeah. to know, but bankers are always optimistic. Everyone are they? Thought, Have you met these bankers? Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty optimistic. Yeah. They think, yeah. you know, they always say, oh, well, activity's going to pick up after Labor Day, mm -hmm. what have you. Um, but at this point, we're still seeing, you know, some of the challenges that, that you talked about. Yeah, and not to make light of it, but we've seen uh, quite a few uh, uh, layoffs uh, and firings uh, in the investment banking space. Just basically, you don't need as many deal makers right now as maybe you did a few years ago. Right. There's this yeah. idea from sources tell us that the banks really overhired during the boom years. You know, 2021 was a record year and they were going all out, they were burning out, so they had to hire more people. And now because activity is down, you know, more than a trillion compared to the first half last year, they just don't need as many bodies. So 